Hello, my friends. It is a lovely Saturday afternoon, and I thought I would get some more drawing done on this um, this sweet little kitty. So if you um, if you missed part one, please check that out first. Um, this page came from Pixabay, and um, I have. Um, put the um, the sketch that I that I did um, as a download on um, my Kofi account, which I will have linked in the description box down below. If you um, feel like um, drawing along with me and um, practicing to play with the drafting film, which is what we are working on um, for our surface. So um, again, just to remind you, you probably don't need to do this, but I did my sketch on the back side of the film. Um, I actually reversed the drawing um, <clears throat> to do that. And so then when you flip it over, your, um, your image is right side up and um, you don't have to be fighting with the, um, the pencil and you don't have to worry about your, um, your drafting film and your your paper underneath getting misaligned if you if you have the sketch on the piece of paper so it just makes it a little bit easier that's the way I like to do it so all right um so I'm going to try and get back into this <laughs> into the swing of things because um it's been uh, a day since I worked on it and I have to kind of try and remember what colors I was using and all that good stuff so we will get back into it and keep going. So let's see, I'm pretty sure I used warm gray five. And I've got some of that color down um, here. I'm wondering if I need any more. Just gonna add a tiny little bit more of the terracotta. I probably don't need it, but I just, I want to make sure I have enough so that it shows through and if it doesn't we can always add it to the back that's one of the lovely things um, I'm just gonna get a paper towel normally I might use um, glassine paper or something like that for keeping between my hand and the drafting film because it does tend to mark up pretty easily but I think just a paper towel will work just fine probably hear my fan in the background um, in the summer months when I film in the summer months you will hear that non-stop because I have to have some air blowing on me okay so we want to I think I'm going to fold my paper again just makes it easier to show you to keep it in frame for you guys I don't have that fancy equipment that lets me put a little thumbnail in the corner of my video so um, so again you want to really make sure that you are following the direction of the fur That is going to um, make a big difference in um, making sure that the, because it's a flat image you're, and you're trying to make it look more 3D by following the direction of the fur, you really help to um, contour the face properly. And you know what, I might try right now this is actually seems like a good place to try this um, as I'm looking at the um, as I'm looking at the fur on the nose I can see this this skin color this terra this peachy um, color underneath the black fur lines and um, 
even though this is a more obvious um, line of that color, I can also see it in underneath here. So this is one of those reasons that um, the drafting film is so cool. Because I'm thinking that I'm going to add these black lines here. The black fur lines. And I'm going to put that terracotta color on the other side of the film. So I'm just going to get a little bit more in here before I go do that. I want to switch to black. Let's see what that, how that works. So, I'm going to take my terracotta. And now when I turn the paper over, Now you can see that color coming up from underneath the skin. I just, find, I just find that so cool. And you don't have to worry about mixing your oranges and your blacks and getting um, any kind of funky colors. picked up the wrong pencil. I want black. Okay, back to black. <laughs> You're lucky I didn't just break out in uh, ACDC. <laughs> then I would be aging myself. Dating myself. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's do a little bit. I'm going to do a little bit darker line, right? here. All right, I'm going to move over. Mm, let's see what do I want to do. Maybe I'm kind of feeling like I want to do the, uh, the bit over the eye a little bit. So I'm going to just open up my paper. Actually, I can probably fold it again. Try to do it like that. Okay, so I really want to. I really want to work on this above the eyebrow and use that slice tool to show you. Again, how cool it is and actually have it work this time um, okay so there's this dark line goes right up here
this bit. There is a little bit of the orange in there, but there's also some grays. Start with warm gray three. Oh, I kind of also think that it needs some brown. Let's see. Here's a good, I want to double check and see. I'm not sure that I printed my drawing the exact same size as my, um, as my sketch. So I'm just going to kind of check and see how close I am. Eyeball. Let's go eyeball to eye. Just the eyeball. No, well, that's pretty close. Maybe I did do okay there. So we've got... I'll show you why I'm doing this in a sec. Because it's actually really easy. Okay, we're good. It's actually really easy to um, get lost and mess up um, even with your line drawing underneath. So occasionally I'll pull my um, proportional divider out and I'll double check like how big is that little bit of fur right there. So I'm good, my, um, my drawing is accurate. So I can, I can keep going with confidence that I'm not um, just willy-nilly adding um, you know, pencil and not really thinking about where I'm, go where I'm going or what I'm doing, which I have been known to do. It just is kind of a, um, what's the word I'm trying to think of? I can't think of it at the moment. It's just like a little comfort. Just to, all right, I'm going to put, I'm going to take dark, dark sepia. And I'm going to put a few little dark short marks in here. Sometimes dark sepia and, and black look so close. So the dark sepia is a nice dark color if you don't necessarily want black black. Okay, I'm going to take some cool gray, cold gray one, cold gray one. And I'm gonna put some of that in here too. Just a little bit. Anything else I want to add in there? I don't think so. Again, I'm kind of new with um, using the slice tool on the drafting film. So sometimes it works really well for me and sometimes I go, mm, I should have used more color first. So. It always looks better when you have dark colors underneath because the, the white lines really shine through. Let's see if I can, I'm gonna try and zoom in just a little bit more. And see if you can see what it's doing on top of the um, black here. It's pulling this, it's pulling these hairs and making them look like they're overlaid on top of that black. I think that's okay. 
okay for now. Okay, so in here, I'm really debating on whether I'm going to use a slice tool or if I'm just going to try and let the white underneath show because I really do want it to be quite light. I'm a little worried about about the um, I'm a little worried about this down here too. I want that to be quite white and I don't think just using the slice tool is going to give me that. I think we're going to have to let the white um, be the whiskers. So that might be a little bit of a challenge for me anyway. We'll see. All right, so I'm going to try and see what it looks like if I just add the dark shadows or the darker colors that are showing but not cover up the white completely. This is um, cold gray four. I've seen some other, um, I don't know if any of you guys follow Bonnie Snowden. She is um, amazing with drafting film. And <laughs> I watch her and she's so confident with what she's doing. I'm really hoping I can get to be that in that um, have that level of confidence eventually. I'm sure I will. It's still all pretty new to me, but like right there where you see all those nice white hairs and they're all kind of squiggly, I feel like um, I feel like that would be so good in um, in the with the slice tool. And I did do a cat previously where I did that and it worked out really, really well. But for some reason, what I'm doing this time is not, it's not showing up like I want it to. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to try it again here. No, I want cool, not warm. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm just afraid. Okay. What's the worst that can happen? I have to erase. If it just does not look good, I'll erase, right? Right. This is all white. Okay, I think I want a little bit of dark sepia in there too. It's um, it's very easy to to stick with what you know and not try new things because we have this fear of messing up all the work that we've done already. And I am right there with you guys on that. Like you get so far and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't want to mess it up. However, I feel like if you don't try, if you don't step out of your comfort zone and go, okay, I'm going to try this new technique or try and even, even drawing an animal. You know, I, um, I started out drawing portraits um, and then discover drawing animals, and I love drawing animals now. And I, I never thought that I would be able to, I never thought that I could, um, and until I tried it, and I did. 
<laughs> so you got to try new things, right? You just we just got to we got to try new things. So as I'm doing these and I it might even be too soon for me to be doing this, but <laughs> I'm getting I'm anxious to see if it's going to work. Um, but as I'm doing it, I'm wiggling my hand just the tiniest of little bits because I don't want perfect straight lines. I want slightly wiggly lines. And it is, um, it is working. The question is, is it going to be light enough? I might have to come in with a... a an eraser, a Tombow eraser or something like that. That worked pretty good. I am not unhappy with that. Now it's not as bright it's not as like bright white or bright it's kind of gray, but it kind of looks white to me. So I'm wondering, and it, I'm wondering if we use now you're going to get a bigger amount of um, color that's going to come off when you use your Tombow. Um, it's not going to be super skinny lines, but I think that that's okay. It's kind of, it's kind of taking like clumps off, which is good. Okay, so that worked. I'm going to just keep, I'm going to keep going. And um, I'm not sure how I'm going to do that though. I think we need a little bit of cream. And the lines there are too long. They need to be super, super short. So I'm going to try dotting in here and see if that helps. Okay, so right here at the eye, there's dark. And there was that little bit of white. And that little bit of gray that I put in there. This tiny little bit, just really, really lightly. And then I'm going to use egg, uh, ivory. In here. And I might want to break out my black again. Because there's this tiny little bit of black. Right there, just on the other side of that gray line. And now I think I'll use, I think I want the dark sepia.
right, I'm going to stop there and we'll work on that some more <laughs> when I get down to that side. So I think I'm going to come back up here now. I tend to just kind of work, you know, from where I start and then just kind of work my way out. But um, it is it is best if I kind of work this way and then come back down and work the bottom part. Because um, I don't want to do too much down at the bottom before I get stuff up here a little bit more done. Okay, so. like this right here is dark and it comes up to almost a, a V not a you know an upside down V <laughs> A lot of this, you're not really seeing hair um, definition. It's just kind of dark. Just shapes. So I gotta say, I really like working off of the printed, um, the printed reference photo. Um, usually it's on my iPad and it's nice to be able to blow things up and stuff, but it's also really nice to have it just right here next to me. So on the next, one that we do. I've already got it planned out. Um, I'm going to show you how I combine different photos or different references together to create something new. Okay, so now I'm getting confused. So this is that you. So all of this should be dark right here. This is all gets a little bit thicker. And then this is all dark. is dark.
And there's dark right in here, but this is all going to be something that we'll use the slice tool for. Okay, so. Let's do some. Um, ba, 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 don't know. I'll use some of this. Mm, probably not. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to try the brown ochre. Try a little bit of that. I am just barely touching the, the drafting film and it's just, it goes on so, so beautifully. I don't know, I'm gonna, this is all gonna get darkened up quite a lot. So it's probably not, probably could have done the same thing that I did before where I put the color down underneath. But I'll give this a try and see what happens. This is all a case of where I think really the um, we want to use the slice tool. So I just need to get brave and put dark color down because I think that's going to give us our best results again. Um, let's try warm gray four. In here, we're going to have to add a lot of black. And I'm, I'm kind of um, taking advantage of the black smearing. Um, it doesn't bother me. Um, I think that's okay. All right. So I'm going to just come in here and start making my black lines. Sometimes I like to, um, instead of going, instead of going from the base of the hair up, sometimes I like to go from the end of the hair in. Um, it just changes things up a little bit and it's funny when I started following Bonnie's tutorials and started looking at her tutorials there was so much of the stuff that she was saying and doing and you could, you could hear me um, you know shouting out my husband came into the room like who are you talking to I said I'm talking to Bonnie because <laughs> I was like yes I do that too or yes that's a, you know it was it was very interesting how um 
how much her style um, reflected what I liked to do or um, or or gave me new things that that fit right in with what I liked to do um, so again if you um, if you want to really learn how to do animals um, with color pencil I cannot recommend her videos enough they are um, they're wonderful Okay, we're getting there. <laughs> it's really important to remember keeping your strokes consistent with the length of the fur. It's, I find, um, if I'm not concentrating enough, I find that my strokes start to get longer um, because, you know, I'm daydreaming or I'm not in a hurry, not to, not in a hurry to get it to be done. I don't, I don't mean that, but just, you know, you're, you're just working away and you your my strokes sometimes will get longer and longer and longer it's like oops nope <laughs> and then you gotta try and fix it because if the strokes are too long then it won't look like a short-haired face it'll completely change the way the the face looks so Try and remember. <laughs> Okay, before I forget, I need to get all of this much darker. I mapped that in so that I knew where I was going, but it wasn't nearly dark enough. So I'm looking at this going, why does this look wrong? Well, that's because your darks are not dark enough. So I'm just going to darken some of this in. more to do up top but I'm just just one thing at a time okay all of this needs to be much darker This is where we use that slice tool. So it'll be interesting to see if I add dark on top, unless I press really, really hard, you can still see the, um, the marks from the tool. thinking that that area that I worked on is almost now too light and 
And we can handle that in two different ways. So I'm gonna try something. So here's our little area here, right there. So if I come in and add some black strokes, just a few, not so much that I'm covering up everything that I did. Then when I flip it over, you can now see some of that darkness that I added on the back side um, on the front side. Which is good. That's good. Okay. I'm not going to break out the slice tool yet. I'm going to keep going with getting this stuff in here. So that's this, that's this, which actually can probably be a little bit. And so we need a lot of strokes right in here. I'm not sure if I'm getting enough color down to use the slice tool on that with, though. I wonder if I should lay some warm gray, a little bit more warm gray one on here first. Because you you have to have enough pencil on the paper in order to make the slice tool work. If there's nothing on the on the drafting film, there's nothing for it to scrape off. So Hopefully I got enough on there. Um, I know all of this needs to get dark because if it's not, then this when I scrape, I'm going to be scraping into nothing. So get a little bit more of that. Kind of feeling like I got my direction going a little bit wrong. Um, that I went too far towards the. I don't know. It's hard to tell. I might be able to fix it with the slice tool. area right here. Um, try a little bit of this warm gray four. some black. Let's 
So all of these techniques um, apply and can be used no matter what project you're doing. So if you, you know, want to try and draw your own cat, you would do the exact same thing um, that we're doing here, but with just a different reference photo. Try. I'll start here. So, um, when you're using the slice tool. Make sure that you're using it on its side and not cutting. You, you don't want to cut, you want to scrape. Just a little bit more for you guys. bit more gray and I don't know how to get that because I've already put I've already got some of that orange down did I do that <laughs> I don't remember doing that I didn't do that on the back did I no all right so I don't know if I'm gonna get that by adding I don't think this I don't think adding the gray is light gray is gonna work I really don't, but actually it looks better to me already, so we'll go with that, and then maybe I think I was just seeing too much. orange. Um, all right, I need to bring some of this dark further in here because it's too big. This is dark sepia. I might want to use black, but on the other hand, I kind of like the brown. And then, what is, that's this right here. All right, 
I'm going to try something. I seem to keep forgetting that I have this handy dandy little mono eraser, which when I want things to get a lot lighter, actually works better than the slice tool. Um, again, it takes out a little bit bigger of a, of a line, but it seems to do what I needed it to do right there. So that's okay. That works for me. I like the way that looks. Um, um, making it look a hundred percent like the um, like the photo is if you're not doing a um, if you're not doing a, someone's pet if you're just doing it for the love of drawing um, is not always necessary to be exact. You want the impression you want the look um, so that when you just look at it you know that it's a cat and you see that it's but it doesn't have to be a hundred percent exact that's just my thought on that but you do what makes you happy not sure I'm <laughs> debating on what to do next because I want to I want to make sure that all of the hairs are layered on top of each other the way they really are so I'm wondering if I should get up there and work my way down I'm not sure I'm thinking <laughs> Um, I'm gonna okay I think the right thing to do would be to do the inside of the ear um, do the inside of the ear then the the fur that goes in front of the ear then the black fur which is in front of that fur Then this fur, which is in front of that fur. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so. This is one of the reasons that I love having the drawing on the back side because I don't have to worry about erasing anything there. I don't have to worry about um, coloring over the pencil and then it it forever being there because I I forgot to erase. So I'm actually going to use this warm gray one. And I think the drawing cuts off in the very, very top of the ear, but just draw it. I just drew it right in there. And actually, I might go ahead and do all of this. So this will be a good um, a good thing to use and put your color on the back side. 
because there's a little bit of brown showing at the base of, you know, like next to the skin, um, underneath all this black. So, I'm gonna put the black in. Really um, make sure that you, as you're doing these hairs, you really lift your pressure up as you're going out, so that the so that the pencil stroke gets thinner and thinner as it gets away from the cat. Sometimes holding your pencil back far um, really helps to do that because you really can't put a lot of pressure on a pencil when you're holding it down at the very base of the shaft. This um, color right here is not nearly um, uh, deep enough, rich enough. Um, and I'm not sure that I want to press harder. I'm, I don't know. Oh. I'm, I'm wondering if I should just pull out a darker color. So let me look and see what we've got. I'm kind of tempted to pull out my drawing pencils, but I'll just stick. I'll just stick with what we've got going on. All right, let's try burnt sienna. Do I have that pulled out already? Burnt umber. I don't think I do. Okay, now I'm going to take my burnt umber. Um, 
going to put that in underneath. And the nice thing, too, because this stuff erases so easily, is that if I do it and I go, oh, no, that was the wrong thing to do, I can just erase it away. Um, and I'm not competing with the other pencils that are on the front. I don't have to worry about messing up what I've already done. You have to have to remember though that you got to work in reverse. You got to remember that the ear you were just working on is over here, not over here. Okay. All right, I'm going to add some a little bit more black now. The other thing I want to do is erase those lines because sometimes you get confused. Did I make my line that dark or whatever, you know, with your pencil? And it's like all you need to do is erase the lines. So we don't need those lines anymore. looks lighter and fluffier already just by taking that line out. Okay. We need a few more little fluffy hairs there. And then I think we can start um, filling in the ear. Do the ear that looks like a warm gray four to me. Let's try that first. And in this case, I think I'm going to just use real small circular motions. not super easy to get um, really smooth consistent all right now I'm gonna switch to a lighter color really smooth consistent um, pencil like you do on paper with the drafting film um, I tried to do a portrait with it one time and um, I really discovered how not easy it was I think this is too light. I think I want warm gray two. Let's see, this is warm gray three. This is warm gray two. Um, yeah, so not so easy to get super smooth um, layers. It can be done, but 
That one takes practice. But because we're um, gonna be running a slice tool through the whole thing, I don't think um, it's not necessary to get it perfect and smooth. Actually, I might go even a little bit darker. So this was four, and I want six. Warm grace. Maybe six is too dark. Warm gray. Four. I have pencils all over my desk, so trying to find them. Cold gray. There it is. Warm gray five. That's what we're going to do. Okay. Might actually even be able to do the darker one. sit here and draw all day all day long and just get lost in what I'm doing I have to remind myself to get up every once in a while and move around stretch drink <laughs> gray one right on the very edge. I don't know that it made a difference, but I wanted to fill that in. And I'm going to erase the rest of that ear. Okay, so now let's put some dark sepia. Where'd it go? <laughs> Can't see the forest for the trees. Is that it? No, that's not it. That's warm gray. <laughs> no, can't find it. There it is. Okay. So we're going to put some, uh, hmm, now I have to wonder if these need to go after I scrape with the, with the tool. I'm not sure. So 
I'll put this down first. I suppose if I have to go over it, that's not a bad thing. So this is the edge of the orange bit and then the hairs start whoosh, really going up. Um, Still with the dark sepia. And this is where the white is. So I'm going to bring some of this in here. This is going to be a chocolatey brown. Like a little bit of that needs to come under here. It's actually maybe not even. Let's try some um, burnt sienna under here. That's better. Maybe even under here then. You can see where I used the slice tool over here. And the color just kind of glides right over the top of where you used it. So that's good, good to remember. This is um, burnt umber again. So, the reason that I skip around is because I'm trying to do it in what makes logical order to me as far as um, the layering. And, and then I just kind of let things meet up together where they naturally seem like they would. Um, okay, so... Now we can do our, maybe a little bit more dark, um, dark sepia. And let that blend into the edge. Now I wanna take my um, divider And if I was going, ooh, if I was going right from the top of the eye and following that line, so to the top of the line, that's pretty good as far as where the end of the head goes. 
so to the top of the line. So I have it drawn pretty, pretty good. Um, so that's where the edge of the all of the hair will go, right here. So I'm just going to start filling in all of this with a combination of dark sepia, probably um, burnt umber and black. some burnt umber. some gray. Um, I'm wondering if I want to use cool gray right there. Try cold gray four. I'll pull those little hairs that are hitting um, that are off of the head. I'll pull those out in a little in a little bit. I want to make sure I get all this dark enough to be correct first. Gray three. I'm kind of tempted to try and leave some of the white. I think I'm going to. I think I'm going to try and leave some of the white where it is. And then we'll use the slice tool pulling out into this black. Because I never seem to be able to get the white to stay white once I put color down. It's like it stains the, um, 
it stains the drafting film. And so even though you're slicing through and you're pulling out highlights, which is wonderful, um, it doesn't ever really get, get you to white again. So I'm going to leave that. I might just darken this a little bit. And actually, this feels, that cold gray that I said I wanted to use, for some reason in polychromos, to me, the cold, the cold gray and the warm gray Well, see, I'm looking at my swatches and I'm like, no, there's a big difference between those two. But when I added it on here, it didn't feel like it gave me enough um, blue. So I'm almost wondering if I should throw a little bit of a blue down there, like maybe sky blue. I don't know. Here I go being brave again. <laughs> Um, okay, so this, oh, you know what? Maybe I'll try it on the back, and then if I don't like it, I can just erase it. Okay, sky blue. Just at the base right here. I like it. I like that. It just gives just enough, and then... I want some more. Um, where is that? <laughs> I'm getting confused. Oh, I haven't done it yet. It's over. Here. It's going to be over here. I think I'll add some, um, some of this blue over here too. Maybe I'll just put it on there so I don't forget. There. Blue looks pretty with those colors too. Okay, I'm glad I did that. I'm almost, now I'm a little braver. It's just a tiny little bit. It's not enough to make the cat look blue. It's just, it's just enough. I like it. Okay, back to what I was doing. Am I ready to slice yet? Maybe a little bit more black. In here. Now the hard part is going to be slicing. I'm wondering if I should add that in now or if I should add it in. I don't know. I'm thinking out loud and um, I'm not making <laughs> I'm not making thorough thoughts for you guys. So you're just kind of going, what the heck is she talking about? It's because I do that because I think out loud while I'm filming. And I can't tell you how, well, you probably know if you've been following me, how often I don't finish a thought. <laughs> um, okay. Although I got to say right now, I'm, I'm really happy with how it's looking. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm really happy with this so far. Okay, I want to um, I want to just I want to finish this before I end the video. So, um, however long that takes, that's how long it's going to take. Um, I think. Oh, do I use cream? No, that's too yellow. Ivory. All right, I'm not sure how well ivory is going to show up on this. It's really not. Um, I might have to use the warm gray. Um, I am not sure if I'm going to do a background on this yet or not. Um, um, yeah, I'm just not sure. I kind of, I've been doing these, um, these ones on drafting film and I've been doing them and leaving the background white and I really like the way it looks. And I'm actually hanging them up in my studio. <laughs> and so it's like, ooh, if I put a background on it, then it'll be different. I don't know yet. Um, 
we'll worry about that later. Um, in the meantime, I think I need to go with a gray. So this is hard because really it's not gray, it's white, it's creamy, but you can't see it on the white paper. Um, so I'm not sure what to do. <laughs> Bonnie, where are you when I, need, when I need you? Okay, so if I don't do that, what would be the next darker color? Should we try Beaster? If I go really, really light with the Beaster, it might work. Okay, so I'm gonna hold my pencil way back here so that I keep um, my lines really light. And I can always erase if I hate it, if it's not gonna work for me. Um, no, see, I think this is the answer. It shows up on the white for out here, which is good. I might have gotten that one a little bit too long. Um, yeah. Okay, and then we're going to come up here, too. Let them crisscross. All right, do I have enough color on here to make the slice tool work well? I'm gonna be safe and add a little bit more because I really want it to look good and work well. Um, let's try a little more warm gray three. I'm thinking that the color that I laid down there before was just not dark enough. but we can always add more after we get the, the lines in because as we discovered, the color does not um, cover up the, the scratches of the slice or the, okay. I am going to, I know you, do, I know you guys probably don't love it when people do this, but I'm going to rotate this so that I can pull with the slice. Okay. So this cat has a lot of those whiskers. So I'm just going to go a little nuts and do it. Um, not everything um, should be all the same direction. You don't want your, your whiskers to be completely parallel to each other. You want some crossing over. I'm gonna stop there, take a look at it and see what it looks like. bad. That's not bad. Okay, now I think that I can come in with a sharp pencil. Still darken a little bit. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. Okay, what is that? Just seeing a few weird little dot thingies, and I don't know what those are. That right there. Um, I'm gonna pull 
just a few hairs with this warm gray four out. Okay, that's bugging me. What is that? <clears throat> All right, so anytime you go to use your mono eraser on um, a white part of your um, drafting film, please make sure that it's clean before you do that or else you will put that smudgy color right onto your film. Okay, I don't know what that was, but it erased right off, so that, that's good. It's good. Okay, we're almost done with this one. Um, black. Give it a little bit of sharp. All right, so I'm going to... Debating, you know what I think I might try doing here real quick? Sorry, I'm going to spin it again. I'm going to take my um, putty eraser. I'm uh, just going to try and see if I can soften this edge a little bit. I don't know if I can. I want it to be, it looks like the edges look a little bit too sharp. They're not quite soft enough. Maybe if I use this burnt umber again really far back so that I'm not putting much pressure on there at all. I can see if I can just soften that edge a little bit. Now let's try the black. I'm just gonna put, my husband just pulled into the driveway, so I have a feeling that the dog and um, there's, gonna be, <laughs> there's gonna be a lot of chaos that's going to happen in the next couple of minutes. All right, let's get that back side erased because that's distracting me. Let's get that gone. See, there's an example of how the drafting film gets just smudges and dirt on it really easily. Just really got to be careful. Okay, well, I feel like that softened up pretty nicely. Um, I'm going to add just a few more little wispy whiskers there. Okay, and then the only other thing is we've got all of these little, there should be hairs that are or here. This wouldn't be a super sharp line. I'm not quite sure how to do that. We'll try starting with this. Let's do a little bit of cross hatching. Am I in frame? No, totally out of frame. Sorry, you guys. Let me zoom out just a little bit. Um, all right, so that worked sort of well, but I think if I use the slice tool and scrape, yes, into the black, that, that helps. It's better. It doesn't look quite so harsh and then we'll just put a little bit of hairs 
over the top because it needs it. Okay, that's better. All right. Well, it feels like we got a heck of a lot more done this time than we did on the last video. Um, I still have some more work to do, I think, down here, um, which I'll do when I start working in this area. And um, other than that, it kind of looks okay. Did I forget to do, I did, I totally forgot to do, I wanted to do some slice in here. And there we go, some down like that. That kind of gives the eyelash look. And it's very possible that um, as I keep going, you know, once I'm done, I'm going to come back in and go, all right, well, we need to add a little bit of, you know, color here. We add, need to add a little bit of slice there. But, um, for the most part, I feel really good about it. So um, thank you as always for hanging out with me till the end. Um, it is much, much appreciated. And um, that will do it for this video. I hope you will come back again and see me as we keep going through this process. And um, please, um, please leave comments for me. Um, I love to hear your feedback. I love to hear um, what you like. Um, I even sometimes like to hear what you don't like because if there's something that I need to, um, to fix, um, I won't know unless you tell me. So um, that's all for now. Um, until I see you guys again, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. Happy arting. Love ya. <laughs> Bye.